This, of course, is subject to change. We can't predict the future. But this is the basic rundown of the way I say, see things unfolding over the course of the next few years. Phase one is an awareness phase, if you will. It's about collecting people, getting the information out there, finding identification with other groups and individuals across all races, religions, and ethnicities, uh, then forming these teams that we have. The teams are in development. They have been a little bit stagnant because of basically a lack of personnel at this stage, um, but they are, the ideas are solid and it's just the beginning of the team formations. Most of our teams as of right now are related to infrastructure, if you will, of the movement site. And of course, there's communication teams. We have a powerful developments team, development team that has a lot of wonderful people in it that's doing good stuff. Uh, I'm hoping to be able to have more focus on these teams as we move forward. Um, the real focus, though, has been the chapters, and that's what, that's what uh, I've been working on mostly, is getting solid chapters internationally set up, basically creating the infrastructure, if you will, um, for communication on a global level. That is, that's phase one. Uh, that's simple enough, and that's the phase that we're in right now, even though we're leaking, if you will, we're bleeding over into phase two. Phase two is the project phase. And this is where real action comes forward with the communications teams and all the teams. This is where protocols of, um, excuse me, this is where projects associated with individual chapters are utilized and shared with the rest of the international community. This is where action starts to materialize when we feel that when there's a collective understanding that we're synchronized with our approach. When people have really digested the material, when people have absorbed it, and there's enough people out there that really know what they're doing, really know what they're talking about when they give lectures, that there's a confidence in the information not being misconstrued and not uh, running off into something incorrect. A classic example of a mistake that keeps continually occurring with this idea of a resource-based economy is that there could be just a resource-based economy city or a resource-based economy society. While those abstractions might have their place, that isn't what the focus of the movement is. That isn't what Jacques Fresco and the Venus Project have been talking about for so long. Uh, that isn't where the logic lies. The logic lies in, in fact, the most difficult approach, which is the global revolution, if you will, the global instatement of a resource-based economy, which by definition is the only type of resource-based economy you could possibly have if you were to adhere to the points that we're talking about. It has to be global. So phase two is about putting things in action, which are basically awareness projects, of course, but they're more organized. They're, they're actually doing something. They're, some of them might even, be, might even resolve certain issues. We might have offshoots, if you will, that approach specific areas. For example, there's a project now uh, regarding world hunger in a, in a way to almost a promotion for the movement to show that, yes, world hunger can be solved. We might move into disarmament projects, anti-militarism projects. This is where phase two comes into play. It's basically an expansion of the teams, expansion of the group focuses, and basically making an organization as such through the interconnection of these different groups with interrelated focuses. Interdisciplinary is a good word. Phase three is where things get very serious, and we're very much far from phase three, unfortunately. This is an action phase. This is where higher forms of activism and boycotts would emerge. This is where fundraising would emerge for city construction. This is where very direct lobbying of different corporate and political organizations would occur. This is where things become dynamic in the interaction with previously established institutions. That are, those are the fundamental three phases that I'm willing to denote right now. And there's a ton that can go into each one of these, but I want to remind everybody that we have to get the infrastructure and awareness phase and the fundamental level down. We need enough members to make our existence seem relevant to the external world. And that's what everybody should be doing. I'm really hoping that everyone can find balance out there that feel frustrated that they say, oh, I'm really inspired by this, I want to do something, but what do I do? They come to the site and they don't quite know, they don't see as much activity, they join a chapter, but the chapter is sort of sort of uh, immobile because they haven't quite gotten their own infrastructure together as far as how it relates to their to their, excuse me, how it relates to their environment. Uh, obviously, each chapter is going to have different actions related to what happens in their environment. Uh, that's going to be for another level of awareness. That's more of a phase two issue, though. But nevertheless, uh, we have to kind of relax a little bit and understand that this is about making the awareness spread as far as possible in a very general sense, to get people to understand, to identify with it, and then to want to help. The more people that want to help literally moves us into phase two. 
and it will become self-evident when that, that occurs. And we already are in phase two to a certain degree, as I said, but you know, we're in between, and I just want to make that very clear. I also want to address the notion of how people get involved in general. The way the architecture is of the movement, which again is not materialized yet because we're in this preliminary phase, I will state again the movement isn't functional in my mind. While there's some great general awarenesses, flash mobs, and things going on, it's not functional in any real capacity. And it really can't be until there's better organization, which is facilitated by more focused people and more central organizers to come to the front, to have the time to do so. We're really walking against the grain here. I have a deep respect for all of you out there, the handful of you that have been able to tolerate the tensions that have arisen because of the way we're doing things, while you also have a day job and everything else. Uh, we're not accepting funding for this. This is Everyone out there needs to have a tremendous respect for those that are actually working directly in the movement, including the moderators and admins, the team heads, the chapter heads, everyone that has a chapter. These people are taking a lot of time out of their normal lives, depriving themselves of what is the basic motivation in this culture, which is monetary acquisition. Uh, it's a very difficult thing that we're trying to do, and I really hope that people fully grasp um, the focus and intent and dedication of those that are serving to carve out this movement for what it is. It goes way beyond myself. But regarding the issue of how to get involved and what the architecture is of the way the movement's constructed, excuse me, it's a bottom-up approach. It's a reverse hierarchy. We're not there yet, unfortunately, though. And what that means is that there are teams and there are sub-teams Sub-teams focus on, focus on specific areas, and they reach consensus amongst themselves regarding certain directions. That information is spread up to the next level, which is the heads of the teams themselves. And then it moves up the ladder until it comes to what will eventually be an oversight board, an international board of the entire zeitgeist movement, if necessary, by the way. Not all actions of the movement have to be approved by anybody. Chapters have their own have their own world to a certain degree, but it's great to know what everyone's doing so there can be better organization globally. The only way effective mobilization will occur is if it's global, meaning when there's an action that has to be taken in the future, it's not just going to be restricted. Well, there might be cases where it's restricted to one area. In the, in the sense of civil liberties and certain countries being farther back than others, yes, that's, that's obviously relevant. But when it comes to larger order global protests, if you will, the only way it's going to make a, tr a real effect is if it's truly global, meaning there has to be an oversight organization to do so. So eventually there will be a Zeitgeist Movement Oversight Board, which is an international council, which will most likely be a collection of individuals that range across the globe and are directly affiliated with the chapters themselves. So all organizers of their chapters, the ones that have started these chapters in their regions and have created their teams, these are the first to be to be looked upon as to join the oversight board. Um, now, a lot of people out there will hear something like that and they think, well, that sort of sounds like what we have today, a sort of a hierarchy at the top, and who are these oversight people? Are we going to elect them into power? There's the notion of democracy. There's all these outmoded projections that come into play. There's all these outmoded value systems that come into play, and it's really unfortunate and it's very difficult to, to address because of the projections that happen emotionally. The notion of democracy, I'll jump on that one. You know, democracy is seven white people hanging a black person. That's what democracy is. Democracy has to come from actual tangible information. It can't come from the arbitrary assumption that everyone in society is educated enough to make decisions about what's actually relevant. Obviously, if you look at the public at large today, we know democracy is a failure because no one, virtually no one, of course I say no one as an extreme way to point this out, but virtually no one really understands how society operates and how it should work in a technical, on a technical level. So true democracy to me is really the way that Wikipedia is organized. It's about information being put into a system with a system of cross-checking through peers, if you will. I think Wikipedia is quite amazing. There are, of course, problems with it, but I think the last analysis of it was a 94% accuracy rate of an encyclopedia created by the public. I think that's very powerful, and that's the exact logic I'm carrying over into the From Earth to Venus project, which is eventually going to be the model, if you will, of how interaction unfolds in a society, well, I hate to say that in a resource-based economy, but what it because that's too, I can't tell you how that's going to unfold in any exact terms, but what I can say is that the way the From Earth to Venus project is organized, we have different people putting it in different information. We have conclusions drawn, arrived at, by the statistical and fact-based information that's presented. This is eventually how society will be organized. If you read Jacques' book, he talks about this. Eventually, it will be interactions with intelligent 
databases that can feed back respectively without the projections and value system distortions that we see today in the decision-making processes of government. Uh, I know that's a mouthful to throw out there, but I want everyone to begin to understand that democracy of the future, and hopefully democracy in the sense of the way we organize the Zeitgeist Movement, is a matter of contributing information. It's not a matter of, uh, of certain people being elected to any position or anything like that. We bring people to the forefront that have the most to contribute. And that is the architecture that we're working on. And as I said, it's a reverse hierarchy. It goes from the sub-teams to the teams to the lower, larger overarching, and then the decisions are made from the bottom up. It's a difficult thing to do because it, on multiple levels, our infrastructure technologically doesn't allow for such things. So there's new developmental programs I have in the back of my mind which will assist in these ideas. But um, I think that's a basic.